this commodity and this letter clearly indicates the thinking of the European Union it's not dictation it's a very mild uh, polite type of letter but they are saying they are saying Breed Smith to comply with the EU directive with EU law you have to stay within these parameters absolutely there's nothing new in this it's more EU bullying of the Irish people and the only thing new in it I disagree with Ray that the tone of it and I'm just reading it now because interestingly I spoke to Paul Murphy before I came out who's our representative on the Water uh, Commission Committee and this was not raised at that committee but it was email, emailed after the meeting was over Today. to the members, yes. And I didn't see it because I'm not a member and Paul just emailed it to me but I'm only actually reading it now and I would argue with Ray that the tone of it is even more aggressive than they have been before. You must do this, you must do that. The polluter must pay, you must introduce a charge. When the Irish people have clearly given a signal at the last election on the streets many, many times that they are not in favour of water charges through a payment. And by the, and tone, by the tone you mean, they, they talk about the directive in, they say it's a flexible instrument. They say, however, any water pricing policy must comply with the principles of cost recovery and pollution pays. Is that what you find offensive? I, f- I find the whole tone of it offensive and we've seen, we've had this from them before. In fact, it was challenged by MEPs such as Lynn Boylan in the past that the directive doesn't say that you have to have a, a cost recovery and polluter pays principle. It does say that you must continue, if, if, that, if that wasn't in your policy beforehand, but it does say that you must continue to... Uh, um, Breed, it to, is sorry, Ray, I didn't interrupt you. That okay. you must continue to retrieve the cost recovery. Yeah, but it says it now, recovery. doesn't it? it? No, but the directive doesn't say that. But yeah, this, this is, is where clarification of the directive, is yeah, it it's not? Clarification is of the, right? It's clarification Breed, of the position our... of the European Union Commission, oh, Breed, which is to please. tell the Irish people that they must pay for water through direct metering instead of paying for it the way we choose to pay for, the way we've argued for, the way it was voted for in the election, the way people marched on the streets <laughs> for it, campaigned the communities for it. And isn't Pay for true progressive direct taxation. The, I deeply resent the fact that Breed suggests that the Irish people do not believe that the polluter should pay. And Breed is not only suggesting, she's saying quite clearly that the taxpayer should pay for a person who pollutes the water sources in this country or who abuses the water system by leaving their tap on all night, for example. Breed wants the ordinary taxpayer to pay for that. What most members of the Oireachtas want, I believe, is that there would be a very generous allowance for people and that those who pollute, those who abuse the system, will pay and not the taxpayer. I hear you, Ray, and you're saying nothing different to what you said the last time I was on this programme. That program. doesn't mean it's right In or fact, wrong. In fact, the last time you quoted yeah. swimming pools as a problem of water wastage and we argued back to you, then bring in a swimming pool tax because how many people in this country have swimming pools? Probably a couple of thousand, but they're an elite. They're not the ordinary people. Well, I don't know and too to many argue, of them. I don't think there's too many argue, in your constituency either. There aren't many in my constituency yeah. and that's what I'm saying. But bring in a swimming pool tax if that's what the wasters are for. To argue and, that the Irish and, people waste water wonderful. flies, the way they want to, to it flies the in the face, it flies in the face of the evidence from the Special Expert Commission on Water itself who showed that the Irish people on average use between 65 to 80,000 litres of water per man, per woman, per year. As against 70 odd thousand in Britain and 70 70 more thousand in Denmark. Let me, let me draw so we are not actually wasters of water as individuals. Let me draw Ray Bassett into the crossfire if you're yeah. brave enough, Ray. <laughs> Here is a quote from the, the letter from Carmena Vella. Uh, and let me lay it out to, out to you and you can interpret this for us. In order for the charge on excessive or wasteful use of water to attain its purpose, the consumption of water for normal use should be set at a reasonable level and the charge for excessive or wasteful use of water should be dissuasive and another key line, the completion of metering will be instrumental to this yeah. effect. It, this is, actually, this is a very good example as to why we ended up with Brexit. I mean, what the European exactly. Union is yourself. saying to us about how we organise our water supply, it's nuts, to be what, quite why? honest. Mm. Because, you know, as a country, if we decide to socially subsidise um, people with water and it's, part, it's a cultural thing, that's a matter for us. The European Union should... Uh, confine itself to making sure that we, we, we don't break health standards, that we don't pollute waters for other countries. But how we organise it internally, I can't understand why they want to, d- to get into that type of detail. I mean, 
I don't know who would vote for this. Quite the Irish pe- representative of Brussels ever voted for something as as intrusive as this. We should be able to organise our our taxation system and our social policy as we want. Does and anybody else in the culture? Politics? Groen or Vincent no, disagree with this? Totally disagree with you. Uh, I think disagree. Uh, my, my, yeah, <laughs> really agrees. <laughs> agrees with you. Yeah. No. I mean, uh, my reading of the letter, and again, we've all we're all just looking at it. Is uh, I mean, I don't disagree with the point around the the the, the role of the Commission needing to check its tone very carefully. Carefully here, and it does have a tone that says, on the one hand, you're at your, you, you know, you're you're at your own devices, but on the other hand, we're going to tell you. How- Rate Irish Water Inc. and the charges, and until that happens, nobody well, will. What get about anywhere. what about and the continuance of spending millions of euro on metering? Will that be a, a political hot potato? I, I would. Uh, you can. You can. Uh, I think that. Probably metering is going to be required ultimately. But look, an awful lot of people who use water, even through metering, will not be paying for it. They'll be subsidised. This yeah. is going. That's going to happen ultimately. But, but people like Breed Smith don't want to pay anything. They, they, that's they not don't true. Want, that's uh, not true. No, I'm on, for uh, progressive uh, uh, taxation finish. in this country. Uh, they they, they don't want to pay anything. anything. Progressive extra as opposed to what you think you pay already. Is not fair? I'm for progressive taxation in this progressive country. Progressive charging. It's very handy. But you're against metering water. as well. Is that right? I am. And if you look at the waste of money that has gone into the metering programme, and yet the expert commission itself has shown that metering our system will only show up something like 10 to 11 percent of the leakages. The main leakages are happening out in the communities, out on the streets. Out on the big roads, where there's already uh, equipment and facilities in the local authorities not funded by half enough over the decades to detect and fix the leakages to replace the Victorian system that we have uh, in our cities. Well, and what towns. happens if the Editors Committee looks at this and says, "Look, the EU Commission has told us mm. that to comply with the directive, we have to recommend charges for excessive use number one, and we have to continue metering." What do you do then? Well, if the Editors Committee comes back with that finding, you're going to see another water revolt on the streets and in the towns of this country people will be furious like I'm sorry I don't know your name this R- man Ray has Bassett said, how do you not know Ray Bassett this God man has almighty. said it sorry he's not God Almighty he's Ray but the point is that people will interpret this as I have done how dare they tell us how to fund a, a, a utility uh, in the way that the, the Irish people have indicated that they're not in favour okay, of Okay and if you don't comply and you uh, face fines, what do you do then? Well, if we don't comp- comply and we face fines, then you open up the whole question of, as Ray Bassett said, uh, not God Almighty, what does the EU represent to states like Ireland? You still why, pay the fines, why do the, 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 the British people vote for Brexit? Uh, not always because they were racist, but in a lot of cases because they were tired of the imposition of austerity and the imposition of rules and regulations. But the logic from of Europe. it, though, Ray Bassett, is the logic. Ask, the logic of what you're saying, Ray Bassett, is if you do not small comply. mindedness and little I have not got a small mind. Nobody, no. nobody from the outside can tell us what to do, or as this letter uh, contains. But this letter does tell us what to do. What it does it's indispensable. But whether, whether it does or not, anyway. If what's in the letter makes sense, surely we should have the capacity to say we're part of Europe. Other people have ideas Ray, as well. If what in the we letter have, made we sense, have ideas about other if what in the letter too. made sense, probably most of the TDs and probably myself wouldn't be in the Dáil because the people of this you, country did not want water. Hang, hang, hang on, 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 on this issue. Hang on, hang on, never hang on, Ray, sure on this issue, there are so yeah, many. Exactly. There are so many shades. Letter, if this letter made sense, if this letter made sense then we'd have a different composition in this country. Yeah, we'd probably indeed. have yeah, a totally please, right-wing problem. government. Hang on, hang we'd on. have no discussion about alternatives. We'd have no discussion about let's take the 13 billion off Apple. Everybody be duff and okay, that hang on a second. to Europe the, and the, say the that's okay. is, The problem is no. there are so many shades of sense on this issue. That's why it hasn't been resolved. But to follow the logic for a second, if you don't comply and you face fines, well, then you're paying extra money for nothing, surely, Ray Bass. Indeed, indeed. But I, I, you know, may, I don't want to be sound like a... What was it? Churchill said a fanatic is not somebody who can't change their mind, it's somebody who can't change the subject. But I think, you know, I've been beaten on about that we do need change in Europe, that this is, this is uh, inside, inside government. 
uh, ministers ministers and officials Civil they, yeah, they don't because they don't. we tried it ourselves and it didn't work don't forget the basket case this country was until we entered the European Union exactly. you remember Bass- uh, uh, Ray Bassett what, the, what this country was like yes but One I have the more confidence in the Irish people than you have I mean almost your view everything is that we, we have ourselves. now <laughs> almost everything we've gotten now has come from our no. membership of the European Union I don't agree if I we weren't a lot of it's it, come from our we own efforts it, we would be just another back like the, like the low corporation tax the lowest corporation tax the refusal one to thing take that's up I think, poverty I, 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 can, I, can I say I, I think Jeremy Corbyn's uh, description of Theresa May's speech is very interesting he talked about her wanting to build Britain as a tax haven on bargain basin wages and conditions. Mm. And that is what she was indicating. She wants to lower the corporation tax, Mm. be able to uh, deregulate Mm. working and pay conditions and then act, have Britain act as a competitive bloc with the EU. And she may well be successful. If she doesn't get her way, that was her threat, wasn't that right? Well, whether she gets her way or not, she wants to deregulate uh, conditions and pay in Britain and she wants to bring down the corporation tax. And that will make her a serious competitor for foreign direct investment, for uh, exports, etc. Do you reckon she'll do that whether she gets access to the market or not? Well, I mean, obviously that's all up for negotiation with her, but this is what she wants. This is what the Tories want. Pre- and it's but, not just yeah, about what, immigration. What Jeremy it's Corbyn about- also did last week, which I could not believe that he did this, was that he said, "We, frankly, we are not bothered about immigration controls. We don't mind one way or the other, was his exact language. So he played completely into the political card that she had dealt for him um, and said, no, 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 immigration controls, we'll make up our mind. We're, you know, uh, Emily Thornbury was on in the press of the weekend saying, we actually don't mind. Mm. So I can't believe that the stance of Labour at the moment when really what they have is a really, really good opportunity I'm not defending a, a no, no, no. on immigration. No. I'm just saying there's a bigger thing, there's a bigger uh, slice of the cake at stake for Theresa May and for the Tory government. They want to create a competitive Britain on a seriously, viciously competitive world market and on a stage that they see themselves as powerful and as good as the European Union mm-hmm. and be able to to um, uh, compete on that, sta- on that mm-hmm. basis. And this is a problem with the whole of the way the globalisation process project has gone, that everything is becoming viciously competitive, race to the bottom, it drives down wages and conditions, and then when they don't get their way, they blame the immigrants. It's all because of the Syrians and the Afghanis coming in here. So they scapegoat uh, minorities uh, in order to maximise profits. And that's what's going on. And that means that Europe is not the sacred cow mm. that it presents itself as. It is not the great, benevolent, collegiate mm. um, uh, project that you described. Ask the Greek You're people. Ask right the there, Greek probably. people I, and I'm ask sorry, them how I'm they sorry, feel sorry, sorry, about sorry, the, sorry, the, the collegiate off, nature sorry, of Europe. Sorry, Let's hear Vincent Bowling. When when Theresa May was asked this question when she was uh, in charge of the Home Office as part of the referendum debate, she said, there is no other way to square the circle other than to put a harder border in Ireland. Mm. She said that. Yes. She's on the record saying it's played back and mm-hmm. back and back and back. Oh, so I, I think so as Dublin. a result, yeah, as a result of that, it is inevitable that we will have to that that not that we will have to, but that the border could be hardened as mm-hmm. a result of that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There is nothing that she's ever said since she became PM and leader of the Tory party that has made me given me any cause for comfort that she thinks other than what she said and what she's on record and saying. So that's why I think I, I agree with Ray. We need to start moving immediately now to what are the solutions. And it is not, you know, it, it is not unusual for countries to share immigration officials at different borders. So that's the price you'd be willing to pay as well to have UK officials at Dublin and Cork and Galway and so on. Because that's what that that happens in countries all over the world. You're not giving them jurisdiction. You're simply giving them presence. So Ray would be prepared to pay immigration officials. Absolutely, American and and, Long would be prepared to pay. Twenty-three. Reed Smith says absolutely no way. Absolutely not. I mean, the the policy of the Tory Party in relation to immigration and refugees is outrageously right-wing, and if we were to cooperate with that, we would be just as guilty as, as, as they are in refusing to open up their uh, their economy, their arms, their country. When I say their arms, I mean these things. I don't mean their, their weapons uh, to those who are victims of famine, war and terrible carnage all over the world. And uh, you, you don't have to see Ireland as cooperating. On the one hand, we can reject a hard border. And I think if they do try to create a hard border, the people both north and south should protest against that. You can reject a hard border and at the same time refuse to, Im- uh, to implement the immigration policies of the Tory party. So no, says what you, would we be- business. It's outlined cuts and, uh, to payments and layoffs if necessary. The company has offered pay rises over a four-year period. Uh, but there must be no industrial action, it says, during that period. 
to attain those uh, pay rises. Should they accept this, I wonder? No, they and they and they won't. The workers won't accept this. They're already campaigning to... Uh, they have a very good campaign, actually, called Stop the Sell-Off of Bus Air and Sobs. And I've brought in a leaflet that was issued on this. It's a very... Um, it's very telling what these cuts will do to the services around the country. So, for example... Uh, there'll be no bus services to uh, Carlow College uh, except for 13 a week, reduced from 180 a week. Now, 180 may be excessive, but down to 13 is a joke. Um, there'll be no bus services to or from Lachlanstown or St Vincent's Hospital from Wexford. There'll be no bus services at all in Milltown Pass, Rochford Bridge, uh, Tyrrells Pass, Kilbegan, Horseleap or Moat a sort of extension of, uh, of a residential area for but, workers but, but in what Dublin. what can you do? You, you, the the company has looked at this. Newton the company Harvey. has obviously looked at this. They say, OK, we lost eight million last year. We cannot mm-hmm. continue in this vein. Mm-hmm. We either have to cut services mm-hmm. or cut salaries. What other option is there? The, the option is that this government stops cutting itself in relation to, uh, and previous governments, in relation to public transport. From 2009 until last year, they consistently cut the subvention to public transport in bus errand and in Dublin bus. We, in fact, give more subvention to Lewis and to Dart than we do to bus errand. And yet more people use the buses but than they do the But there are other services. The there are private services. There are private services and that's part of the problem for bus errand. Why? Is it not choice? Uh, choice, it may be. For the consumer. If, if, you, if you put it in, in those terms, the consumer has choice. But when you are running a public bus service, public transport service that needs subvention and then you allow private operators to compete on the same terms on the main routes ad nauseum because the NTA have issued dozens of licences They've rejected to private, that. The uh, NTA have said it's not ad nauseum, it's not saturation. Yeah, well, it is saturation, I'm yeah, afraid. They say and the not. figures show, well, they say it's not, but the NTA say a lot of things and have said a lot of things during both the Lewis and Bus Ireland strike. The problem is they have they have said they've increased the subvention, but they have not brought it back to 2009 levels. It's been cut, 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 Read cut, right down to its lowest point at £30 million, uh, last Ray year. Ray Kavanagh. And have the you consumers ever actually, heard the consumers get, of sorry, a word let me the consumer. Yeah, yeah, the consumer there is a passenger. Consumers. The consumer is a passenger. You don't well, eat you buses. Well, you have mentioned them in, 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 in your most recent... I have recent. because I you said public transport, them. public you transport, don't care public about transport. Them. The public and I'll tell you... Hang on, let me make the point. Yeah. I'll tell you what the consumers do. They, uh, they leave their homes and they go down to the quays or they go to a meeting point in the city and they get on private buses because the private buses are half the price and twice the um, uh, regularity Not true. Of, of bus air. Not true. There is a tragedy unfolding here. The tra- it's a tragedy for rural Ireland, for the workers in bus air. Uh, successive governments have not tackled a rural policy. It should be all part of a rural policy, but it is unsustainable. And let's not kid ourselves to try to have have a company uh, that is going to lose eight million a year. Well, what happens to the people? What, what about the people of? And this what, is not a facetious question. You are what about Labour the people Party of Newtown Pass and Rochford Bridge? I, 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 I can't yeah, believe I'm I, listening to the Labour Party there, saying there, you don't there, subvent there, public transport. There can there can be a solution, but it will not be a solution based on buses that cost three hundred thousand. It'll be a solution there, based there on competition small, in the private market. Small small buses, uh, more frequent service, and a uh, whole different category. Uh, but My God, you've moved far five away from... Dolan. You've moved so far away from the here? principles of James um, Connolly who founded your party. I, it is shocking. I'm, I have to say, I'm, 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 I'm all in favour of subsidised public transport. I think in favour of subsidised public transport, I think it's, um, it's one of the uh, one of the best uses of taxpayers' money is to subsidise public transport. Um, I recently took a journey from Tralee to Limerick on a bus air and I thought the service was superb. I think the ticket was 14 euros. I would have paid a good deal more. So one um, solution to um, the bus uh, bus airing problem may be to raise prices, to raise the price of tickets. Um, but I think that, we, uh, it, that it, the bigger question it raises is that our, our, our public transport priorities are a bit mixed up. Um, I was very struck um, sometime before Christmas when that uh, report was issued about the enormous subsidies that the taxpayer is paying to ferry three or four people on a train from Ballybrophy to Carrick and Shore. It was something like €400 Euros per passenger 
her journey. But that's a very bad example. No, in fairness, no, no, that's a very bad example it's a to use. It's a total waste of money. Of course it is. It needs to be. Of course it is. And then you can, you know. Of course it is. But there part be, of the, the there Western must, there must Railway be corridor. Up tension. There no, must of be course up it is. But it's a very about, bad about example about public no, no, transport. But yeah, but it there, is the there, worst there, example you could use. There, but there are other, there, there may be other examples as well. I mean, there, there aren't. There, this is the worst. There is. There's all kinds of lobbying by TDs from the West of Ireland for. For the Western Railway corridor, there is a very good, useful service. It's that particular is, part of it. Is, there there's is, some real there is no there. need for that. There, is, there are excellent roads between all the main towns and cities in, in, in well, some of the main towns and cities in the West of Ireland. Um, <laughs> I don't want to say all some, of them. That was <laughs> some rollback. Yeah, but sorry, <laughs> but we do have. I, I'm relatively new to this country, <laughs> um, but we have. There, there is a superb motorway system, um, and there are excellent roads. The roads are much better now than they were when I left this country. In in, in the, and climate change is also a problem. Uh, <laughs> we want to get people off the roads. Okay, to be honest, look, no, 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 no,